China shocked the AI world this week, twice. First, Chinese researchers unveiled a quantum photonic chip claiming thousand-fold speedups over NVIDIA GPUs. And the surprising part is that this isn't future tech. They say it's already being deployed across aerospace, biomedicine, and finance, the sectors that depend most on fast, precise computation. Then, in the same week, Anthropic reported what it believes is the world's first AI-orchestrated cyber espionage campaign, allegedly tied to Chinese state-linked hackers. Let's start with the AI chip. It comes from Chip X, short for the Chip Hub for Integrated Photonics Explorer, working alongside a company called Turing Quantum. Together, they developed what they're calling the world's first truly scalable industrial grade optical quantum chip. And the first thing that stands out is the size. This isn't a fridge sized quantum machine, it's not a lab only experiment. This system is built on a six inch thin film lithium niobate wafer that packs more than a thousand optical components into a single piece of silicon. That's the entire point of photonic integration. Everything is miniaturized, but still powerful enough to support a quantum classical hybrid architecture. What makes this chip different is simple. It uses light as the carrier for qubits and computation. Not electric signals, not matter-based materials. Light doesn't generate heat the way electric signals do. It doesn't require large pathways. And because photons move faster and lose less energy, information flows with far less resistance. This directly targets one of the biggest problems in AI today. Data centers are drowning in power consumption and thermal load. Training large models pushes electrical systems to their limits, and even the best GPUs are now bottlenecked by heat. So a chip built around photons, not electrons, hits at the exact weakness of classical hardware. Now, the 1,000 times faster claim is what caught global attention. No chip is 1,000 times faster at everything, and this one isn't either, but for specific workloads that benefit from quantum-style parallelism or extremely low latency optical routing, it's entirely possible for performance to skyrocket far beyond classical hardware. Photonic systems excel at handling many simultaneous pathways of information, something electrical systems struggle to scale efficiently. Another surprising detail is how fast these systems can be deployed. Traditional quantum setups take months to assemble and calibrate, but according to Chip X, their architecture cuts that timeline from six months to just two weeks. And this isn't a universal quantum computer meant to crack encryption or run exotic physics experiments. It's a photonic quantum accelerator, purpose-built for AI, simulation, pattern analysis, and high-speed data processing. The chip acts like a programmable photonic processor. It manipulates light using color, timing, phase, and distribution, with thousands of optical components working together in a single monolithic design. That monolithic approach is what impressed Western researchers the most. Everything, the waveguides, modulators, couplers, filters, is integrated directly into the wafer. No external modules, no fragile routing, just one unified piece of silicon. Achieving this level of integration is extremely difficult, especially with thin film lithium niobati, and the world noticed. The team won the leading technology award at the 2025 World Internet Conference in Wuhan, a competition with more than 400 entries from 34 countries. Winning there signals that China isn't just experimenting, and they're industrializing photonic quantum technology far faster than expected. The production numbers back it up. ChipX has already launched a pilot line capable of producing 12,000 wafers per year, with each wafer yielding around 350 chips. That's not massive by semiconductor standards, but for quantum classical photonic chips, it's far beyond what most people expected China to achieve this early. They admit production is still the bottleneck. Thin film lithium niobate is fragile. Yields need work. Consistency needs improvement. But the important part is this. China already built a full closed loop ecosystem. Chip design, fabrication, packaging, testing, and deployment all inside one chain. Meanwhile, in Europe and the US, photonic hardware is still stuck in prototypes. Smart Photonics in the Netherlands only recently moved up to 4-inch indium phosphate wafers. See Quantum in California is working on adapting 300 millimeter silicon photonics lines for quantum roadmaps. But China is already running a functioning 6-inch thin film lithium niobate pilot line, producing chips at scale. It's one of those moments where the competition silently shifts, and only a few people notice immediately. And since competition always leads back to NVIDIA, it's worth noting, NVIDIA is also heavily investing in optical and quantum technologies. They know electric signaling won't sustain AI growth forever. Power consumption is skyrocketing. 
data centers are hitting physical limits. Companies are spending more on electricity than hardware. Photonics is the path forward, and everyone knows it. Another detail that stands out is how these chips scale. Researchers say the architecture can be stacked into clusters, supporting up to 1 million qubits of quantum-inspired processing. These aren't superconducting qubits like Google and IBM use, but they still allow quantum-style parallelism across massive photonic grids. The chip is parallelized at every level, with photons, pathways, and even wafer-to-wafer -wafer integration. So instead of acting like a single accelerator, multiple chips form an entire quantum-inspired processing network. And it's not just about speed. The chip delivers stability and extremely low power usage. Photons don't heat circuits like electrons, so thermal runaway issues vanish. Light carries more information per unit of energy, giving more bandwidth and less interference. This matters hugely for AI workloads, which demand constant memory movement, massive throughput, and stable thermal environments. One of the most fascinating parts is how China is already using these chips. Aerospace and biomedicine rely heavily on simulations. Finance relies on pattern matching, risk modeling, and algorithmic trading. Photonic quantum acceleration directly enhances these workloads. And because these chips don't require extreme cooling, they can be inserted into existing server racks with minimal redesign. China's announcement also arrived at a time when the global quantum race is fragmented. The US and IBM push superconducting qubits. Xanadu focuses on silicon photonics. Europe invests in indium phosphide. And China is betting its roadmap on thin film lithium neobody. Every region is choosing a different path but China is the first to push their approach into industrial grade production. And this is where the transition happens. Because while China is advancing hardware at an unusually fast pace, another story arrived from the West, tied once again to China, but this time not about innovation, but about misuse. Just as China's photonic chip was making headlines, Anthropic, the company behind Claude, says it uncovered what it calls the first known AI-orchestrated cyber espionage operation. According to the company, a group of hackers allegedly linked to the Chinese government managed to manipulate Claude into performing automated tasks that formed part of a coordinated cyber attack on nearly 30 major global organizations. The discovery was made in mid-September. Anthropic says the attackers posed as legitimate cybersecurity professionals and fed Claude a series of small assignments. On their own, the tasks appeared harmless, but when placed together in sequence, they formed what Anthropic describes as a highly sophisticated espionage campaign. The hackers allegedly targeted tech firms, financial institutions, chemical manufacturers, and parts of government, though Anthropic has not named any of the organizations involved. The humans behind the operation reportedly chose the targets manually. Then, with Claude's coding assistance, they created a program designed to autonomously infiltrate the selected networks with minimal human input. Anthropic claims the chatbot successfully breached several organizations, extracted sensitive data, and even sorted that information to highlight the most valuable material. The company says the hackers have now been banned from Claude, and affected organizations, along with law enforcement, have been notified. But the cybersecurity community is divided. Martin Zugek, a director at Bitdefender, warned that Anthropic's claims are bold, yet lacking in verifiable evidence. He said the report raises real concerns, but doesn't provide enough technical detail for independent analysts to confirm how severe or accurate the situation truly is. Some experts are questioning whether this case represents a new frontier in AI-driven attacks, or whether it's being framed that way to make a point. This isn't the first time AI companies have claimed that state-affiliated groups were abusing their models. Early in 2024, OpenAI and Microsoft reported that five state-linked hacking groups, including some tied to China, had use their services. But back then, the AI tools were used for basic tasks like translation and debugging, not fully automated attack chains. Anthropic hasn't disclosed how it linked this latest activity to the Chinese government. China's US embassy has denied any involvement, and several cybersecurity experts have noted that the industry often emphasizes AI-enabled threats because raising alarms drives interest in defensive tools and services. Google researchers recently tested AI-generated malware and concluded that, while concerning, such tools remain unreliable and experimental. 
Anthropic itself acknowledges this. In its own report, the company admitted Claude frequently made mistakes, inventing fake usernames, generating fake passwords, and claiming to extract secret data that was already public. These errors still limit the feasibility of fully autonomous AI-powered cyber attacks. Anthropic argues that the same capabilities that make AI dangerous also make it essential for defending against advanced threats. But for now, experts are debating whether this case marks the beginning of something new or simply an early preview of what future AI-assisted hacking might look like. So here's the real question. If photonic quantum chips enter data centers worldwide, what fails first? GPUs, power grids, or global cybersecurity? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.